Contrary to popular belief, Taiwan is not actually a country. Internationally, it's recognized as part of China under the One China policy. Even the United States does not recognize Taiwan as a country. And uh, a good way to illustrate this is the fact that the U.S. has no embassy in Taiwan. Uh, officially, the U.S. recognizes international law regarding Taiwan and its status. Unofficially, the U.S. does treat it like it is a country. And what they're trying to do is turn Taiwan into this foothold of Western influence within Chinese territory. Uh, they want to do what they were doing in Hong Kong, only on a much, much larger scale. And uh, a, a way of illustrating that is the U.S selling arms to the administration and the authorities in Taiwan. And more recently, the U.S. Congress has been preparing a pro-Taiwan bill. Let's take a look at this Reuters article. Uh, the bill is called the Taiwan Peace and Stability Act, and it's supposed to support the diplomatic, economic, and physical space of the self-governing island. This is part of many bills and legislations and initiatives that the U.S. is trying to come up with to compete against China. And that's what this is really about. This is not about what's in the best interests of uh, the people of Taiwan, their peace, their stability, their economic growth. This is what's best for U.S. Uh, foreign policy. And it's open declaration of wanting to maintain primacy in the Indo-Pacific region, where the United States is not even located. This Reuters article also talks about the Eagle Act. What is the Eagle Act? This is from the South China Morning Post. The Eagle Act, Eagle stands for Ensuring American Global Leadership and Engagement Act. And they're saying that it will boost economic competitiveness and push China on human rights. And, and this is just another way of saying they're going to make up a bunch of lies about human rights abuses in China, and they're going to use that as leverage against China and, and pressure other countries to cut ties with China over these false allegations. The, the situation in Xinjiang, China is a perfect example of the US doing this in practice. Uh, so I, I wanna go back to this though, ensuring American global leadership. Does anyone understand what the problem is with this, this concept? that the US is stuck on and this concept that is driving all of these growing tensions with China. China's population is between four and five times larger than the United States. They have access to plenty of resources. Their population is hardworking and well-educated. Uh, I've showed this before, this uh, older Forbes article, the countries with the most STEM graduates, and they're talking about China, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics graduates, 4.7 million in one year versus the United States at around half a million. These are graduates that are going to directly contribute towards uh, technology, innovation, manufacturing, and infrastructure, all of the things that a real economy needs to be strong and continue to grow. Uh, and so there is no way the U.S can compete with this. China's economy will inevitably surpass the United States's. And as it does, China's military will surpass the U.S. It already has a larger navy than the United States. So this notion, let's come back to the Eagle Act, this notion of ensuring American global leadership, this is a fantasy. And it's a dangerous fantasy because the U.S. is going to insist on maintaining its status as the global leader contrary to reality. This is, this is extremely dangerous. This is an official policy of a nuclear armed nation that is not rooted in reality. Let's go back to Taiwan because that's what this is really about, this, uh, this move by the US to turn Taiwan into this battering ram against China. Would Taiwan benefit from what the US is trying to do here? This this process of building Taiwan up as a proxy of U.S. interests in the Indo-Pacific region. We can go to the U.S. government's own International Trade Administration website. We can look at Taiwan Country Commercial Guide. This paragraph right here, U.S.-Taiwan Trade. United States is Taiwan's second largest trading partner, accounting for 13.2% of total trade and 12.2% of Taiwan imports. China, 
This is the U.S. government admitting this. China is Taiwan's largest trading partner, accounting for 24.3% of total trade and 20.1% of Taiwan's imports in 2019. So this is relatively recent. And China has almost twice as much trade with Taiwan than the United States. There's one other thing I want to show you. This is from Harvard University's Atlas of Economic Complexity. Where did Taiwan export to in 2018? No surprise, China 33.53%. And this much smaller square over here is the United States at 10.48%. And if we look at imports it's a very similar story china is number one at 18.75 percent and the united states is lagging at 11.69 percent and the nice thing about this atlas of economic complexity is that there's a timeline slider so you could look at what this was say 20 years ago let's look at 20 years ago you can see how it's completely inverted in favor of the united states 19.64 percent and china only 4.25 percent if we look at exports uh, china is barely on it on the graph here at 2.9 a almost three percent and the united states is at a whopping 25.17 percent uh, if we go back just 10 years ago 2008 China has already pulled ahead of the United States in both exports and imports regarding Taiwan. Here's, here is China 10, and here is 10.71 and 10.35. 20 years ago, no competition. The U.S. was far in the lead. 10 years ago, China was starting to pull ahead. Today, China is almost twice as far ahead as the United States. Uh, everything has been inverted in favor of China. And when the United States talks about China invading Taiwan, China knows it doesn't need to do that. Time is on China's side. All they have to do is wait. And Taiwan is going to find its rightful place under the One China policy, recognized by every nation on Earth just about, including the United States officially. And so this is what I wanted to point out. Uh, for Taiwan, creating problems with its largest trade partner and a country that it technically is a part of makes no sense for the people in Taiwan, living in Taiwan. Uh, for the United States, it's obvious they're using Taiwan to further their own self-serving foreign policy, which as I pointed out, is completely irrational. It's not even rooted in reality. They want to maintain global primacy even though they have a smaller population, soon to have a smaller economy, and certain parts of their military already being smaller than China's. It makes no sense at all. It's incredibly dangerous. Uh, what the United States needs to do and what both Americans and the world would benefit from is Washington figuring out a place for the United States among other nations, rather than insisting on this foreign policy of imposing itself upon all other nations. Uh, if you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description for all of the links that I talked about during this video. Check out the Atlas of Economic Complexity. It's a very useful tool when doing these comparisons. In the video description, there's also ways there that you can help support my work, like by becoming a Patreon member. You can support my work month to month. You get a little bit of extra content and there's lines of communication that we can kind of build a community around this work. And to everyone helping support my work, thank you very much. This wouldn't be possible without that help. And as always, thank you for watching.